pieces of fish, the shrimp in there. The shrimp is half raw, there are tomatoes in here and cilantro. I'm gonna grab a chip and I have to begin with the ceviche. The food is all good here, but their ceviche is just, it's on the next level. Good morning, I hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens. I am in Tulum, which is in the Quintana Roo state of Mexico. This is a gorgeous place. It's the ancient Mayan port city. And today we're just gonna, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna walk around Tulum. We're gonna explore Tulum. We're gonna visit some of the sites. We're gonna eat some amazing food. It's about 8 a.m. We are starting at a place for some legendary breakfast tacos. I can't wait to try them. Oh, breakfast oh, tacos are the best way to start your day when you're in Mexico. Okay, this place is called Taqueria Honorio. They make all of the tortillas right here immediately. So you're eating fresh, hot tortillas. Uh, and then they assemble everything over here. They have some seating. They actually have some bar counter seating where you can sit and they have a bunch of red tables where you can sit as well. Gracias. Esta es lechón. Lechón. four main different types of tacos here. We got one of each, I got one of each on a plate. Uh, this one is the relleno negro, which is a common Yucatan Peninsula dish. This one is cochinita pibil. This one is asada carne asada with pork though. And finally, one of their most well-known tacos is lechon al horno, which is a, this is a, a, a suckling pig and you can see that crackling skin. It's an absolute joy to watch them as they assemble the tacos. They put all the ingredients, they have all the different stewed meats and braised meats and they, they just, they're so incredibly juicy. They put them onto corn tortillas and then they just quickly heat them over a hot plate. There's nothing I'm happier to see at 8 a.m. in the morning than a plate of tacos. You can smell the, the habanero chilies and you, oh, you can see the seeds in there too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely go in for some of this and you can see some cilantro in there as well. That roast pig, that, that skin, it's just irresistible. Add a little bit of this, give it a squeeze of lime. Mm. Oh. oh wow. It's awesome. We've got the crunchy, like ridiculously crispy skin. The pork is just fall apart tender. That is sort of like a guacamole, maybe with a little bit of chili in it. It's not very spicy but it tastes, it's so fragrant. You can taste the cilantro in there, the onions. I'm gonna try some of the other, it's like a green salsa. Oh, oh, that's the habanero I was looking for. Oh, that's awesome. And that pork, that just melts in your mouth. Um, it's so juicy, it's so tender. That first taco was insane. I gotta add on some of the, the pico de gallo. There's some onions and tomatoes in here and some cilantro and maybe a little bit of cabbage as well. I'm gonna need to load that up with that habanero salsa. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. You can taste the smokiness of that grilled pork in that one. Mm. Oh, there's some beans in that one too. Okay, next up is the relleno negro de pavo. And this is a, a Yucatan Peninsula dish as well. It's a black stew, black chili stew uh, with turkey. Taste the, the like depth of it's like a complex flavor in there. You can taste those blackened chilies a little bit, but it's still it's still kind of mild. But the turkey is so tender it almost tastes like pork. Final taco is the cochinita pibil. This is another type of a stewed or braised pork. 
I think I'm in love with this habanero salsa. Excellent as well, and they're all four of them are totally different. Yeah, this one again is just just fall apart tender pork. I tried all four different kinds, and I'd have to say the best one was the lechon, that roast pig with the crispy skin. Yeah, that, that, that's a taco you can't miss when you come here to Tulum. That was an unbelievable stop, tacos for breakfast, a huge success. We're in the car now and we're on our way to the ruins of Tulum, which is one of the main things to see when you visit Tulum. And you pass through, there are some salesmen that try to sell tours at the front, but then you just keep coming back. Uh, they have a parking lot here. We paid 100 pesos for parking, and then we're gonna walk into the ruins. I think it's a little, a little walk. How much did entrance cost, Carlos? We just made it into the ruins, the complex. Uh, but in order to get here from the car park, you can either choose to buy, we, we didn't actually know what we were doing and we got the little bus trolley tickets for 20 pesos uh, and that drives you into the entrance or you could walk for, I think it's like a kilometer and a half or so, it's not that long. Uh, actually, I would have preferred to walk, but we didn't even know. Uh, and then after that, you get to the entrance of the park. Uh, and we paid 70 pesos for tickets, and now we are walking into the archaeological zone of Tulum. The plant life here is absolutely gorgeous. It's a mix of tropical plants. I mean, it's mostly tropical, but then all of a sudden you'll see mangroves, you'll see like some kind of like dry looking plants like cactus. It's really lush. It's, it's, it's really thick as well, this, the, the greenery. <laughs> Micah loves it. Whoa, Micah. There's an iguana right over there. He just blends right into that rock. Oh, we walked in the walls and it just opens up. Quickly, just to share with you a little bit about the city or the, the ruins of Tulum. This was an ancient walled city of the Mayans, which was built and which was inhabited between the 13th and the 15th centuries. And it was a port city. It's right along the Caribbean coast, the beautiful turquoise ocean. And the port served Koba, which is, I think it's about 50 kilometers or so inland into the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, we're gonna go to the coastline first to see the, the castle and hopefully get a view of the ocean. Well, and the castle is one of the, the most well-known of all the structures within this entire complex. Something that I was just reading is that it used to be brightly painted. So if you can imagine the turquoise coast with the, the Mayan castle here and the entire city and then brightly painted, this, it would have been incredible. I mean, it's incredible to see now in its ruined condition. But imagine if it was just brightly painted, that would just, it, yeah, it's a, it's a majestic sight. It's been cloudy the entire morning, but right as I step up here, the sun came out from out the clouds and you can see the water just sparkling. Yeah, it's, it's an insanely beautiful view. steps are a little bit slippery because of all the sand and there's a lot of people but oh man those views are just gorgeous oh, freezing cold oh yeah that's refreshing oh but it's it's crystal clear it is turquoise you've got the Mayan ruins right above on these rocks it, it's yeah it, it's absolutely picture pretty I think the 
highlight for me is that they're not only ruins, but they are right next to the gorgeous ocean. And that's what really makes it beautiful. From here, we're just gonna take a quick drive to Playa Paraiso, which is Paradise Beach just down the coast from here. And then after that, it's time for lunch. We just pulled up to Playa Paraiso. There is some parking on the street for free, but then you can come inside and they charge 50 pesos. So we came inside. It's pretty nice and relaxed, laid back here. One thing you'll notice here is that the sand is so powdery fine. It, it feels amazing on your feet actually, it's so fine. My hair is starting to look like the, the Caribbean coast, windswept. Uh, but we are so hungry right now. We're on our way to go eat lunch, and this is gonna be a really, really good spot. It was about a about a 20 minute drive from Tulum, but we drove down the highway and then we got into this really local neighborhood where there's uh, villas and a little off the beaten path. This is beautiful back here. I think this is the restaurant. I found it just searching the map on Google Maps and it looked like a place we have to eat. They're known for their seafood. Uh, it's just a real laid back kind of beach restaurant and it's called Chamicos. Oh. Yellow tables out here by the beach just they kind of look like mangrove. It's kind of like a mangrove forest back here, but it's breezy, it's cool. Uh, you see you're greeted by just a pile of coconuts and hammocks are laying all, all, all randomly all around. I think they mostly only serve seafood here. Oh, this is great. Okay, I'm extremely hungry. <laughs> and fried fish too, yeah. Ceviche chamicos. Uh, ceviche chamicos. <laughs> I have to practice my Spanish? Yeah. <laughs> ceviche chamicos. Pescado frito, yeah. Pescado frito. Sí, está bien. El pescado lo tengo grande, brother. De 300. Como para dos personas, está bien. Sí, está bien. Pescado. This is the type of restaurant you can just walk around barefoot and. Yeah, this is, a, this is an ultimate chill spot. Yo sé cuánto es. Eh, 350. Los demás, ¿cuántos son? Sí, porque estamos bastante hambrientos. Sí, porque estamos bastante hambrientos. Sí, porque This is the open air Caribbean style kitchen. Uh, they have a fish, just one type of fish, and he said it's similar to a red snapper. It's a local fish. We got our fish. We got the we got a big one. Uh, he cut slits into, it, added some salt, and then straight into this giant cauldron of bubbling oil over fire. That's a huge amount of oil. has all arrived. We got a couple of different ceviches, including the ceviche chamico, which is a mix of seafood. It's mostly fish, shrimp, raw shrimp, and lobster in there. And it looks, it's so juicy. You can see the lime juice in there. You can see some cilantro. We also got just a uh, ceviche pescado, which is just fish, 
ceviche and then we got a giant fried fish and then we also got a cocktail de camarón which is a, a shrimp cocktail. I'm gonna grab a chip and I have to begin with the ceviche and this is the ceviche chamico. So you can see pieces of fish, the shrimp in there. The shrimp is half raw, there are tomatoes in here and cilantro. Oh, and then I think the I think the whole lobster is like still within here. Oh, so you can you can deshell it yourself. There might be some lobster mixed in as well. Oh, that is gorgeous. There's a whole peppercorn in there as well. Oh, that's how I like it. Mm -hmm. Oh. It took a few chews for all the flavors to come onto my tongue. You taste the black pepper, you taste the citrus, the lime in there. Oh, the shrimp is fresh. It's it's just saturated with that, that lime juice. Oh, it's incredibly refreshing. Oh, that's insanely good. I'm gonna add on some of the salsa, which is, it just looks like pure chilies in some, maybe in some salt water. It doesn't taste like the ceviche itself is spicy, but they do give you a nice bowl of chilies. Oh, wow. Oh, you immediately taste those chilies. Um, possibly habanero, but yeah, they're a little bit spicy, but that just, not, not too spicy, but perfectly spicy. That completely complements the entire thing. Oh, oh, those shrimp in there, those raw shrimp. They have this amazing, slightly crisp, gooey texture to them. I don't think it's been cooked with the whole ceviche. I think they just added it to the ceviche at the end. Maybe it's, it tastes almost like it's fried. Okay, next up, this is the cocktail de camarón, which is the shrimp cocktail. There's avocado on top, there's onion mixed in, and then it's kind of a tomato-y sauce. It's a little sweeter than other versions of cocktail that I've had. I think with a little bit of lime, it would be awesome. Uh, the shrimp tastes really good, and I love that creamy avocado and those crunchy onions in there as well. It almost has a fruity flavor to it like a fruity tomato flavor. It almost tastes like mango in there, like pureed mango. Next up to try the fried fish, and this is a pretty good sized fish. Uh, they sliced it so it gets extra deep friedness on those on those fillets. And yeah, that was a, a little bit of some brown oil, but it looks fantastic. I'm gonna squeeze on a little lime juice. And then just grab a, grab a chunk from the side here. Oh yeah, you can feel how moist that is. Yeah, it's really, really crispy. Um, yeah, it's just it's just fried with a little bit of salt, maybe a little bit of pepper in there. Um, but I know it will make it amazing. And then also another another squeeze of lime. Oh, there's some onions on the side here too that I want to eat it with as well. Maybe a few onions on there. Okay, I might need a. I'm gonna pick this up with a spoon now to get it all. Yeah, that salsa, you can make everything better. It's such a sharp spiciness. I mean, it's not that incredibly spicy, but it's really sharp. Okay, we ran out of chips, so I'm just gonna use my spoon to eat some of this ceviche. And this is the last dish that we got. This is just ceviche de pescado, which is just a fish uh, ceviche. There's tomatoes in here and onions and cilantro again. This makes the ceviche just perfect. I love the ceviche with the mix of everything and the shrimp. But I just love the fish. Just pure fish. The freshness of it. The fish is soft and tender. It's so juicy because of that, that lime juice. It's salty, it's peppery. And yeah, with those, with that salsa, with those chilies, that makes it perfect. It's insanely good. <laughs> I took it on my 
the food is all good here. But their ceviche is just, it's on the next level. It's so good. It's so fresh. It's so refreshing. The balance of flavor is perfect. Yeah, the food and the setting here is absolutely outstanding. What's your favorite dish? My favorite dish, um, I think it was a tie between that fish, fried fish was good, and the ceviche, fish ceviche is good. Good choice, good. The ceviche here, it's just, it's so good, it's so well balanced. Uh, perfectly salty and peppery, just with a little bit of that chili salsa. Oh, it was, I loved it, absolutely loved it. The setting here, the relaxation, the laid back chillness of this place. This is absolutely great, it's time for dessert. What a perfect dessert. Come on. We are just gonna relax here for the rest of the day, hang out, lay in the hammock, and oh, this is, I am loving this. Oh, Micah, you got the spoon now. You can have some, some more of the coconut. Hey, Micah. Mmm. Mmm. All right, Jamai. <laughs> Micah is loving it here too. <laughs> Micah. <laughs> Micah. Let's okay, Micah, let's take a nap. Okay, Micah, let's take a nap. <laughs> you, I know quite a few people who have visited Tulum and every single person that I know that's been to Tulum absolutely loves it. It's a place that you can fall in love with. It's it's beautiful. The culture is fantastic. The food is delicious. It's, it's a wonderful place to visit in the world. And so, yeah, we were gonna do more, but I think we're actually just gonna hang out here for the rest of the afternoon and, oh man, just completely take it easy. This place just completely relaxed us to the max to the point where we just decided to call it a day right here and just hang out here for the rest of the day on that food too. My buddy Carlos is in that hammock. I think he fell asleep already. So we are just relaxing, ultimate relaxing here. Uh, but I'm gonna end the video now. This is. Oh, this is the ultimate relaxing place. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Huge thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and click subscribe. I'm gonna be publishing lots more food and travel videos and also click that little bell icon so that you get notified of all future videos that I publish. Thanks again for watching and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye from Tulum.